was the oh shit part? The oh shit was um, me falling in love with Sander. It never made me feel like I love Mal any less. Oh. Mm -hmm. Much more sense as to why you're so in love. Because I was confused and now I'm not. Finances, this changes the game. My heart breaks for Mel. It really does. Especially in this scene, in the sense that they came into the ultimatum because Yoli was saying Mal is not ready to commit. She has all these problems. Mal put in the work. She had a great connection with Lexi, which she shut down because she was trying to focus on her relationship only for her to come back and find out that her partner has been doing A, B, C, D and the partner seems closed off. I think Yoli is leading her on. But anyway, I digress. Hey there. Thanks for stopping by. It's Valerie. Welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'll be reviewing um, the Ultimatum Queer Love, Season 1, Episode 7 and 8. If you're new to my channel, please click the like button, turn on the notification bell and leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe. Okay, so we'll discuss the couples and see how we go and if there's anything else I'll add at the end. I'll start off with Tiff and Mildred. Tiff and Mildred I've always thought was a wild card. I don't even know, I don't think they needed the ultimatum, I think they needed to break up. That's just my opinion. Um, so they're trying to put into work, they're trying to put in place what they learned during their time apart. And so they're having a conversation um, and sort of trying to understand how they can work on the relationship and make the changes needed. And while Tiff is speaking, Mildred talks on top of her and she sort of complains that you shouldn't be doing that because that's disrespectful. I think Tiff has realized that she needs to learn to set boundaries and she's trying to do this with Mildred and Mildred goes, oh, I'm Latina. And it's like, yeah, but still, that's no excuse for you interrupting somebody's conversation. And she tried to justify that she will always interrupt people's conversations because that's how she was brought up and that's how she was taught to speak and that's how it will always be. And for me, things explode and Mildred walks off and it's just like, oh, why? Why are we doing this? Even when they sat down with Tiff's friend, Tiff's friend was like, I think Tiff's friend liked Sam because she already said she didn't really like Mildred because of how explosive they are. And the friend was saying, you know, the two of you shouldn't have come to the ultimatum. You should have gone to counseling or something. And they turned around and say, oh, well, our counselor fired us. And it's like, how bad were the two of you that someone would fire you and refuse to help you? Seriously, what exactly went on in that therapist? office that made that therapist turn them away i don't know and the friend could tell that this is something that's not working and i don't know why whether it's the producers that are saying you know continue to be vague don't let it be known that you're going to break up i think they need to break up i don't even think they need to wait for the for the conclusion i think they should have broken up way in advance and um, they do go to the beach they have their date and they have conversations about you know merging their families their fur, fur babies and the fact that uh, Mildred has a child with special needs and it's like this is a toxic relationship the two of you should be focused on how to sort of break up and just remain friends you don't need to always be in a romantic relationship with everyone you have to look for someone who brings out the best in you and this relationship is not doing that so the two of you need to split up and um, they did so sort of go spend some time they went on a date and uh, I think they need to break up. That's the solution for the two of them because this relationship is not it. It's not healthy for either one of them. They need to move on. They can be best friends and understand that this is not it. But anyway, I digress. Ozzy and Sam are another couple that I think need to break up. Sadly, it seems that Sam and Tiff, the you know, the wildcard couple, have actually grown and learned something from this experiment and their partners are still stagnant in the places that they were at at the start of the experiment and are not willing to budge or make any changes because um ozzy uh, introduces her brother to sam and it turns out her parents don't know she's gay and it's like under which rock are they living just looking at her you can tell that She's not straight. So what rock are they hiding under? And the fact that she's talking about proposing and stuff, when she her parents are not aware that she's 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 gay, doesn't make sense to me. Um, she obviously is still wanting to be pampered by Sam, and Sam just like Tiff is now setting boundaries, and she's not accepting certain behaviors from Ozzy, 
this was evident when they went on a on a date with uh, Sam's friend and they were having conversations about the changes that had happened and uh, Sam was trying to say that I have learned to speak up, I've learned to put my, myself first, I've learned to stop enabling Ozzy and Ozzy threw a tantrum and stormed out and was crying and was oh my god she nearly rolled on the floor that's the only thing that was left the way she's lashing out she's got a lot of issues she needs to go to therapy she doesn't need to be on the show and i don't even know why they cast her then they had to take her back to her place and after that they came back again she stormed off and it's just like where are we going with this relationship if nothing else sam needs to choose herself she needs to prioritize herself and learn that she can love ozzy but she can love her from a distance she doesn't need to be in a romantic relationship these are the two couples that I would outright say they need to break up. It's not if, when or how, it's now. They need to break up now because this is definitely not working for them and they're only wasting time going through the same thing over and over and over again. I don't think it's worth it. And then Ray and Lexi. Ray and Lexi, I don't get them as well. I think they're... Uh, I, I don't think Ray is it for Lexi. I think Lexi is way more mature than Ray because Ray understands she made a mistake and she continues i think she's using the waterworks to get empathy because she's realized that she has made a mistake and she, she realized that lexi is holding her accountable for her mistake and so her only get out of free jail card is crying because every time she's crying she did try to say oh they've made up they they i think they were sexually intimate but lexi didn't want that discussed on camera she just sort of brushed it and went oh you mean when i kissed you in the car or something and she went no i mean that and she went oh well that's not what i'm talking about and it's just like how long are they going to continue to push this it's either forgive one another or move on the problem that ray has is now she's having to compete with someone like um mal and mal was very emotionally mature in this relationship and she was very supportive and she was very loving towards lexi so this is going to be an uphill battle for ray to try and sort of make up or sort of try and sort of win lexi over they might get back together but i don't see them lasting i think they might get back together just for a little bit but long term i don't see them having a long-term relationship i have a feeling they will definitely break up and then Xander and Vanessa. Xander and Vanessa. I think Vanessa is using this as a competition. I think Vanessa doesn't want to lose Xander and will do anything and everything just so she becomes victorious. I think the idea of Yoli taking Xander away from her is killing her. And this is why she's doing everything within her power to take Xander away from Yoli. She, they did have a conversation on their date. I think they were on the rooftop and they were sort of talking about their relationship. And Xander was saying, You say you want to get married now. How do you see life? What are you what is your idea of the future? And she was, Oh, I, I don't think I can put anything into word at the moment. And it's like, I think at that moment Xander realized that she's playing me. She's playing me. She's trying to manipulate me so that I go along with whatever she says. And I choose her instead of choosing Yoli. Because if you're saying you've changed your mind, you've gone from not wanting to get married and suddenly you want to get married, what is it about marriage that you're after? What is your idea of the marriage? What is your idea of family? Where do you see us? And she couldn't say that. And this is why it was interesting when her dad sort of met them and said, I think it's more your ego that's afraid of being bruised. I don't think you are really into marriage or you've suddenly made the roundabout turn and you're, you're ready to marry Zander. I think your ego is bruised and you are trying to come up as the person that has won out of all this. And this is why you will do anything and say anything to make sure that you keep Zander. Otherwise, I don't think you're ready for marriage. And you don't need to just marry someone just because you, you love that person and you don't want to, them to leave you. You need to accept that someone is going to leave you and it's okay for them to leave you and you need to move on with life and i was like oh my god this man has finally said something that makes sense before he was just wasting everybody else's time but now at least he's given his input as a dad and is showing that he loves his daughter he cares about his daughter and is trying to do the best by her really as i said my heart is breaking for mal because i don't think she deserves what she's having to put up with i don't think she deserves to be played by yoli i think yoli knew at the changeover that she was done with mal but she's decided to go with mal because mal confronted and said tell me the truth if you don't want to come with me you don't have to come with me if you want to come with me come with me you know and she she, she wouldn't say yes or no she was very vague about that she, 
Mal has gone out of her way. She's made her breakfast. She's given her whatever she wants. She's looked after the dog. And uh, um, Yoli's like, I don't know whether this is sustainable. I think Yoli was looking for excuses. She reminds me of Ray and somebody I've forgotten from the from the ultimatum who, who when they went back to their partners, they, they kept finding faults with their partners and kept looking for arguments. That way they could distance themselves from their partner because they had fallen in love with the person that, that they had lived with uh, during the trial marriage. And this is what I see with um, Yoli. I think Yoli has checked out. I think Yoli has decided that Xander is it for her. I think she's just buying time until decision day and then she's going to pick um, Xander. And part of me was happy and part of me was sad because when they met up with, with um, Mal's friend, Mal's friend was very dismissive to Lexi. She was very rude and very disrespectful. And her jaw dropped to the floor when... Um, Yoli told her that she had fallen in love with Sander and she could see a future with Sander and they had discussed finances, they had discussed children, they had discussed their future and the fact that when they confronted it that what do you mean you discussed finances? Have you actually seen the finances? And she went, yes I have. At that point, I think, I think, at that point, I think Mal's friend should have just told her it's time to check out. Because if they're already discussing finances, if they're already discussing children, this is not something that if it's now a definite, yes, we are going to move on. This is what we're going to do. So you need to protect yourself and move away. And so I was surprised when Mal said, oh, if I propose to Yoli, will you be okay with that? And it's like, propose to who? She's just told you she doesn't love you. She's told you you're a friend. She's told you she's got somebody else who will provide for her what she needs. And the fact that Yoli wants to get married to someone and be a kept woman whereby everything is provided for her doesn't make sense to me. Why should the partner be the one to provide the money for IVF? Why should the partner be the one to provide finances for everything else? Why can't she do that herself? That didn't make sense to me. That did not make any sense to me. I am still sort of wondering why. Why should, you know, Sander or, or Mel be the one to provide the money for for you know for IVF? Why should they be the one to provide the money for the mortgage, for the money for and what is Yoli's responsibility in this relationship? That didn't make sense to me. That didn't make sense at all. I don't know how I feel about the group event, the last group event that they had. There was a lot of disrespect in my opinion, but I am here for Mal confronting Vanessa in front of the two people that, because apparently Vanessa sent Mal a DM sort of saying that Yoli and Xander are still talking. I personally think she was trying to instigate a fight between Mal and Yoli and this is what this was her way of sort of stirring the pot for them. I personally think Vanessa was trying to cause trouble for Yoli and Mal and I have to give it to Mal for confronting her in front of the other two people to say what exactly happened? Why did you send me that message? What was your intention behind that message? What or what did you expect to accomplish? By sending me that message that makes sense to me because how dare she try and play the innocent person while she's causing problems to somebody else and she is trying to rebuild her relationship i didn't like that i think if she had a problem with yoli she should have spoken to yoli herself or as mal said she should have spoken to zanda and told zanda to, to stop communicating with yoli and then yoli and zanda for them to be flirting and holding hands and telling each other that i love you i miss you that was disrespectful, very disrespectful to 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 not only to Mal but also to Vanessa, regardless of how I feel about her. The, and and when sort of Mildred, Yoli, and Zander were, were stood there chatting, and Mal came to sort of she was just trying to join a conversation, and Yoli's like, "Well, I'll appreciate you if you were not here." Be honest with Mal. Tell her, Mal, I have moved on. I have found someone. I've fallen in love with someone. And I would appreciate if we could separate or if we could keep our distance. Instead of making a fool of her on something that's going to be seen worldwide. I didn't like that. I thought that was very disrespectful. I like the fact that at one point it looked like Lexi was sort of trying to comfort Mal. Because she could tell Mal was very upset. But I don't know. I didn't like it. And the cattiness of it. I did not like that group event at all. I don't know why the producers felt it was appropriate. Um, Ozzy was there trying to put on a front. I think Ozzy's just being there just for the, per for the sake of it, but I don't think she's really 
invested in anything that's going on around her. I think she's someone who is set in her ways and is not willing to change. So I don't know why she even bothered coming there. Um, everybody then packs up for the, as they get ready to leave. I think if nothing else, the only couple that I see surviving, I don't know. I think everybody else might decide to commit and leave there, either engaged or just leave there as couples. But I think I can foresee Yoli and Xander living there as a couple. I know there was a clip of um, Mal sort of kneeling down to propose to Yoli. I don't think she should have done that to herself. I don't think, I think she's a way bigger person. She's a way better person. She's a beautiful young lady and will find someone who will love her the way she deserves to be loved. And I don't think Yoli is it for her. I don't think Yoli is it. Anyway, I digress. Thanks guys for watching. Um, please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.